Hello people of YouTube, welcome to my channel. Today I have a new video that is going to be a bit different than the usual ones. In this video I will be showing you and explaining to you how I set up my... I don't really know what to call it, my spiritual journal, prayer journal, bible study journal? I don't know what I should technically call it because it's a combination of things really. Um, I'm interested to see what I'm going to title this video, but we'll see. Before I get into that, I need to tell you something. In all truth, I need to apologize because I have not been very truthful. Not that I've lied, but I have indeed withheld some truth. I have kind of brushed off or kept secret my Christianity. I've kind of downplayed my relationship with Jesus because I didn't want this channel to be about me and my personal and private life, and so I guess I had the false assumption that my relationship with God was a private thing, but in all honesty it's not supposed to be like that, it's supposed to be public, and so I apologize for not telling you the truth and not showing you the truth that Jesus is everything to me, and so with that out of the way, I will show you my unnamed journal. <laughs> now here is my journal. It's pretty boring right now, just a plain black binder. I may decorate it in the future, but we'll see. So when I open this up, the first thing is this. Now before I go into this, I will tell you that this journal was largely inspired by some other blogger who also does YouTube videos, whose name I really cannot remember right now. I will find out her information and put it below if you want to check out her original video slash blog post on this and if you want to see how she does her journal. Anyway, moving on, front page here is my life's mission. You really, if you want to do a journal like this, you come up with that for yourself, but I think it's a great idea to put it on the front so when you open it that's the first thing you see. Mine obviously says that my life's mission is to be a person who loves outrageously, overflows with joy and peace, walks in humility and kindness, is filled with and led by the Holy Spirit, and seeks God in all things. The first divider is actually called the personal evaluation one. Now on all of these dividers I like to do a little quote, actually a verse, and kind of design it in a unique way. I just enjoy doing fonts and such, and so that's why, but you can keep it plain if you want. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I started out doing this personal evaluation. It was supposed to be a once a week thing, just kind of a weekly recap, just, but I found I was journaling most of that stuff in my regular journal, and so I didn't really get much done. Now I have adapted this personal evaluation thing to become this. And I will go into more depth once we get to the word study part of this, but for now I will tell you, I guess you could call it a list of surrender. Um, I'll explain that a bit more, as I said, once we go further, but... The next divider is the scripture memorization divider. Now, we have another verse on here, which is Hebrews 10, 16. I'm sure you can't see that because I write so very tiny. Now this one, of all these sections, I think I have used this one the most because I was in TBQ, which is Teen Bible Quiz, and you do a lot of scripture memorization. Just to show you, I'll say, I started here on August 14th, memorizing, and since then I have memorized this, this much. <laughs> oh my gosh. Never ends, guys. It never ends. No, we're almost there. Um, there we go. Stops right there since August 14th, 2016. So, um, I will do another video on how to memorize things. I think that would be helpful for a lot of people. And so I'll show you how I did that. But this is where I write down the verses that I memorize. Next up is the Bible study section. I have Psalms 119, 105 right there. Now, the Bible study, I've been doing a personal study in Psalm 139, where I've been going verse by verse, writing in different translations, sometimes 
going on dictionary.com, defining certain words. Then I'll put my thoughts and then how I will apply it, the application. And I'll try to do that for every verse. It's been going a bit slower than I would have liked, but that's okay. Also, in my Sunday school um, at my church, we are studying Daniel, and so I have a different section for that. Now next, we have the word study. Now this, I've not done much. I've started doing, started doing this in March. I've not done a lot to it, but I'll explain what that is. We have Proverbs 2.10 on the front of this. Now, um... I kind of like the idea of picking a word and focusing on it for, I don't know, maybe an entire year, maybe just a season of your life. But the word that has been very important to me for the past few months is the word surrender. Now, um, I, I don't really have a big plan on how I'm going to be doing these word studies, but you will put the dictionary definition, the origin, um, how many times it's mentioned in the Bible. Some of the words like surrender aren't necessarily biblical words, but they're in the Bible somewhere. The word surrender is in the Bible 12 times in the NIV translation. Today I wrote down kind of an application how I decided to focus on this word and what I'm going to do about it. So that's what I've got here. I haven't done much to that, but... Now, as I said, I would go back to that bizarrely named list of surrender thing. So, it's kind of a long story, but I will try to keep it short. Um, God revealed to me that I was holding on to things way too much. Like, literally any part of your life that you're holding on to and trying to keep out of God's hands is... It, it's too much, you know? It doesn't have to be a big thing, it can be a small thing. And so, over here in this personal evaluation section, I have started a list of things as I think of them to surrender them to God. They can be big things, you know? They can be small things like um, this devotional time I was doing at the time when I wrote that. And I will write them down and say, God, I'm giving you these things. And so if I ever find myself worrying about them or trying to bring these things back into my control, I will look at this. And if it's on there, well, it's in God's hands, so I'm not going to worry about it. But if it's not, then I should probably add it anyway. So. Next is the gratitude section. Thessalonians 5.18. That's actually from a chapter that I memorized in TBQ in 2014, actually. <laughs> so it's, it's good to memorize the Bible. You know a lot of verses. Here, it's very short. It's much shorter than it should be, but I kind of forget I have it. It's a list of all the things I'm grateful for. Some of them can be very general things that you're always grateful for. You know, like your family, your church. Other things, like I put down instances, like little small things, like the one time my mom folded my laundry for me, and um, things like that. The last section I have here is the prayer section. Here we have James 1.16, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That has been one of my favorite verses lately. But up here we have kind of a daily prayer schedule sort of thing where every day we'll kind of have a prompt or kind of a theme for prayer. I don't necessarily pray for all these things each day. Sometimes I'll just do specific prayer requests. But every day I will always have something to pray for. For example, Sunday, you can customize this for your life and your community, things like that. But for me, on Sunday I pray for the church, both the global and local church. Monday, I pray for my family. Tuesday, I pray for various communities that really need God's protection and revelation. For example, the gay communities and Muslim communities. Uh, Wednesday, I pray for my youth group and my friends. Thursday, I pray for various charities that we are a part of, um, which includes Project 12, Feed One, the Nazarene Fund. Friday, praying for America. And Saturday, praying for social media friends. Some of these people I may not know, they may be following me, subscribe to me, I may be following them or subscribe to them. Anyway, I will just pray for them on those days. Now on the back I have prayer requests. Each day I'll try to pray for three to five of these requests, these specific requests. Now, 
If you have a prayer request, my friends, I would absolutely love it if you would comment it below and I can assure you, I will definitely be praying for you and I mean it in, oh, I'm excited, <laughs> because um, God has been revealing to me lately how amazing prayer is and I'm kind of obsessed with it right now. I don't think obsessed is the right word, but I'm very encouraged by it. If your prayer request is private, you can of course private message me so that it won't be publicly commented. I will of course pray for you. So that's about it. I'm grateful that I found a setup like this that has been adapted to me and works well for me. It has definitely brought more order and intentionality in my devotional life. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget if you do have prayer requests you can comment them below. I promise you I will be praying for you and prayer is a very powerful thing. But if they are private and you don't want them posted publicly you can also private message me. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you want to see new videos from me every other Thursday, you can subscribe below. Again, thanks so much for watching guys, I will see you in two weeks. Bye! <laughs> Ugh. Ugh.